Hello, it is Topical Tuesday, October 16th, 2018. Steve Cypress here enjoying a beautiful sunset back here in sunny Arizona. A rather chilly day today and a fairly strong wind. Hence, no ugly red Hawaiian shirt today, wearing a sweatshirt all day today. Wind chill, it's got to be down, uh, I don't know, near 50. Uh, Toby's here, Richard's here, good seeing you. So, uh, caught up on the news, I saw that yesterday Sears declared bankruptcy. Now, if that's a surprise to you, you haven't been paying attention, right? The once greatest company in America. It was the number one retailer and the number one employer in the entire country. Uh, has been dying a slow death for decades. And uh, they hope that the bankruptcy will allow them to continue in business and not actually be dead. But for all intents and purposes, they're gone. And a big reason, well, there's all kinds of, I mean, you can read up on it. If you do a search on the internet, you'll find all kinds of uh, uh, inside slimy deals being done with the CEO himself, or now the ex-CEO, and all kinds of other people basically stealing from Sears on its way down to its demise. Um, however, the, the reason for that demise and the precipitous drop over the past few decades has been a failure to innovate and change with the times. I don't know if you know, uh, maybe people don't know, Sears was not always the number one retailer in America, or a retailer at all. It started it actually, I mean, I've done a success story Saturday on the founder, uh, how Sears started by a conductor on a railway train who bought a bunch of watches and sold them on the train. Uh, but very quickly, it became a catalog sales company, selling stuff through the mail all over the country. Only then did they open retail stores, which enhanced their sales. But you know, the writing's been on the wall for a while, and Sears has clung to this idea. They forgot where they started, and they've clung to the modern idea that they're somehow a retail operation, instead of they're simply in lost sight of what their business really is, which is selling stuff to people. And they falsely believe, and I think they still do, that they're a retailer with physical brick-and-mortar retail locations. So while they were clinging, and still are, closing the stores, slowly bleeding away. They'll close 100, then another 200, then another 100, then a new 200. They'll lay off 10,000 workers and another 10,000, another 20,000. They, they die the slow death, clinging to that. Somehow they're going to stay in retail, forgetting that they originated as a catalog mail order company. Speaking of which, the modern embodiment of a catalog company is Amazon.com, which does the same as Sears as far as selling lots of stuff, but they're not stupid enough to base their entire business on a retail operation with high overhead and low margins. They're operating out of warehouses, right? So Amazon has screamed past Sears while Sears went down. Amazon went up and is now the richest company in the history of mankind, or right up there going back and forth with Apple and doing virtually all its sales uh, from warehouses with the modern equivalent of the catalog, the website, and selling online. So hopefully you can learn a lesson from Sears and don't make that mistake. Don't think you're in the business of the way that you choose to deliver your product or service. You're in the business of delivering your product or service. Don't get married to the way that you do it. Uh, Sears certainly didn't. It led to them becoming the greatest American company. They weren't married to selling out of catalog. They said, what if we add the stores? Now recently, for some reason, they're married to selling out of stores and forget that that's not how they started and that doesn't have to be how they stay, but have a feeling they're going to be stupid and they're going to cling to the whole retail thing and they're going to die all the way down. Uh, one benefit of that, by the way, are their landlords. Another thing you can read up on if you look all over the internet. I've known, uh, I heard about this uh, 10, 20 years ago. Uh, Sears had signed these long term, crazy, low cost leases in malls all across America. And as they keep closing these stores, it's great news for the landlords uh, and the owners of those malls that now get to rent out that space at double or triple or like four times the, the rent that Sears was paying. So this whole Sears going away demise by a poorly operated company 
uh, is going to be the benefit of lots of people, and that's the way the world works. It's called capitalism, folks. It's the way business works. There is not a, such a thing as too big to fail. There shouldn't be. That whole BS socialist bailout of the car companies and the banks and all that crap, all that BS. Cat, let capitalism work, folks. Survival of the fittest. Uh, certainly for small business, that's the way it is. So if you're watching this video, you're likely a small business owner. Not likely that you can go to Washington, D.C. if you get in trouble and beg for a bailout and get billions of dollars from the government. So we've got to operate smart. We've got to remember what business we're in and not get married to any particular way of distributing our products or services. Not a particular town that we're in. We can pick up and move to another city. We can close an entire, stop selling an entire line of stuff or providing a whole bunch of services and shift completely into something else. We can fire anyone that's been with us, even if they've been with us a long time, if they're not performing and replace them with someone else. We can do all kinds of things. We gotta be nimble, gotta be quick, gotta be constantly innovating, and don't be married to any of the, that's the way we've always done it crap. You can see by the horrendous and pitiful sad example of Sears and many other businesses. That's just not the way it's done. So let's see, we got some questions, comments, concerns here. Everett is here, great seeing you. Toby says, need to adjust with the times or die. Pretty much that should be Sears slogan, shouldn't it? We didn't adjust with the times and we're gonna die. And Toby says, gimmicks work, new directions, gimmicks, I think you meant to say gimmicks don't work, new directions do. Uh, gimmicks can work right. They can work in a short term, but hopefully you're not here to learn gimmicks. You wouldn't be watching my video to learn any kind of gimmicks or fly-by-night or black hat or, you know, BS crap like that. I teach evergreen, long-term, basic, foundational strategies that work now. They've worked before and they'll work forever in any type of industry and in any type of business. Stick to the basics, folks. Uh, right, Toby corrects that gimmicks don't work, gotcha. Kevin says, hello, good seeing you, Kevin, from the other side of the world. While I'm enjoying the sunset, you probably just passed by the sunrise in the Philippines, did you not? So hopefully you're going to have a fantastic day, and everyone else uh, here in America will have a fantastic night. That'll do it for Topical Tuesday. Good seeing you, Phil. I'm going to enjoy the sunset and actually go enjoy a, my first dinner back home after eight nights away with my beautiful wife, Michelle. And we'll be catching the Milwaukee Brewers, her beloved hometown Milwaukee Brewers, miraculously up two games to one in the playoffs, two games away from going to the World Series. Very exciting times in the Cypress household because uh, while I'm a New York Mets fan and they're nowhere near the playoffs or World Series or anything, at least I can root for my beautiful wife, Michelle, and her family to be very happy, so that's what I'm gonna do. And Kevin says, the innovator's dilemma. Uh, I'll stick around if you want to uh, elaborate on that. Uh, the dilemma, being innovate or die, being uh, it's difficult to innovate, but you have to do it. Being, oh, maybe being uh, human beings dislike change, but as business owners, if we don't change, we're gonna die. Maybe that's the dilemma. Uh, in that case, business owners, you know, we can't be. The 13%, at least here in America, 13% of us own businesses. The 87% can be afraid of change, but we cannot. We need to be constantly innovating. And Kevin says, yeah, too close to the customer and supply chain. Uh, and Joe McCready's here, good seeing you. So I think uh, what Kevin is saying, yeah, exactly, is, uh, yeah, but you know, Kevin, like I said, I mean, business owners, we, gotta, we have whole different standards than the average person. Uh, the average person who depends on us for their livelihood to pay their rent and their bills and their mortgage and feed their family where they rely on us and they rely on us to not be afraid of change to innovate to constantly be thinking to keep up with the times if not keep ahead of the times and you see sometimes i mean very often the bigger they come you heard the saying the bigger they come the harder they fall and the bigger they are the more red tape the more bs the more fingers in the pie uh, the more hands in the cookie jar with Sears, probably lots of people just refusing to understand and accept reality and lots, again, you can read up on it, lots profiting from the inside. The CEO himself, who has now stepped down as CEO and is still the chairman of the board, profiting tremendously 
millions, hundreds of millions of dollars profiting personally from steering Sears into the ground. Just an amazing, sad story. Hopefully, we don't hear that from anybody watching this and anybody who's a small business owner, because if you're a small business owner, I love you, I support you, and I'll help you any way I can to keep going. Contact me for help if you want it. Love to give it to you. Hopefully you don't need it. And you're rocking. And someday I can feature you on a success story Saturday. But now we're getting ahead of ourselves. Tomorrow, Wisdom Wednesday, I'll be back to give you a piece of my mind. A little bit of wisdom to help you have fun and make money. I'm going to enjoy the sunset and dinner and the game with my beautiful wife, Michelle. Thanks, everyone, being here today and watching on the replay. And I will catch you tomorrow over and out. Bye-bye.